Anyway, so I work for Shell. And you may recognize this from our uh, gas stations. The, uh, the ones with the yellow and red scallop logo. Now that's visible. But what may not be so visible is the changes that are happening in Shell. And those changes are the first indications of Shell's intent not only to deliver energy solutions that delivers today's needs, but that also meet tomorrow's expectations. Because the world, uh, because, and to understand really what's behind uh, those changes, it would be really good to look at one of our recent shell scenarios called Sky. And I just love that name Sky, because the sky is above all of us, whether we're in Tokyo or whether we're in Washington, D.C. And it's the air that we breathe, and it's the atmosphere that influences our climate. What it also makes me think about sky is blue sky thinking. It's the boundless imagination. And that's exactly what shell scenarios are. They look at different pathways that the future can emerge. So they're not predictions, they're not forecasts, they just ask the question, what if? And the shell sky scenario actually looks at a potential pathway how all of us can reach the climate goals of the Paris Agreement. So it starts with today's reality, but then it goes from 2030, what does society, society really need to do to meet the ambitions to get to a net zero emissions world? Now that's a big word. So what do we mean by a net zero emissions world? Well, it's basically a world that we keep running as we're running it today, but on average, we're not putting any carbon dioxide, CO2 in the atmosphere anymore. Now, ultimately, that will mean a complete rewiring of the world economy by 2050. Well, that sounds like a long time off, but action can, no, indeed must start today. So what are some of these things that are required, these actions that are required to reach the sky scenario? Well, I'll give a couple examples, but actually all of them need to be achieved. So it's a tripling of energy efficiency from where we are today. It's an end to deforestation. By 2050, only cars are sold with an electric drivetrain. And it's a five-fold increase in electricity demand, which should be largely met by renewables. And it needs substantial technology advances. And that's really what I want to talk about. So what are the technologies that underlie how energy is produced, used, and made accessible to people? Now, what's really cool to me, working for Shell, is that we're already working on a lot of these technologies that are required to make a lower carbon energy system. And most of that, as I mentioned, we're doing on collaboration with others, because we can't do it alone. Now, what are some of these technologies? Well, let me give a couple examples. So here you see smartphones. I think all of you got one, so they're everywhere. And the sensors that are built into them, whether it's location, motion, audio, video, they're built into everything. And that opens up very interesting business models. So let's take, for instance, the delivery of retail goods, and how a package gets to its final destination. Now, you would think that's something that doesn't require any sophisticated digital technology. Now you just pick up, uh, you get a vehicle, you move it to one location, pick up the package, and deliver it to the next address. But now, what do you want if you want to deliver 1,000 packages, 100, 1,000 packages across a big city like Tokyo in 24 hours? And you want to do it in a way that's convenient to the customer, is low cost to the retailer, and actually doesn't burn as much gas. Now, that's where digital technology can really make a big impact. By combining smartphones, software platforms, and sophisticated algorithms, you can really optimize that system. And that's actually where Shell invested in a startup company who really figured this out. And it's an indication of Shell's interest in the transportation of goods that goes beyond just delivering the fuel. How do we get better air quality? How do we improve energy efficiency? 
In fact, studies show that if you make full advantage of the digital technologies we already have got, by 2030, we can uh, decrease energy-related emissions with 20% by 2030. So you can imagine that Shell is all over applying digital technology in our operations. It not only makes our operations more reliable and safe, but it significantly helps with energy efficiency. Now, another area where uh, technology can really make a big difference is in uh, using biofuels for internal combustion engines. Now, the neat thing about biofuels is, it's basically plant matter, that the CO2 you emit while you burn it is actually about the same as you absorb from the atmosphere as you grow in the plant matter. And did you know that in, uh, did, did you know that in, uh, in Brazil we actually got a partnership that is producing sustainable bioethanol from sugar? It's through the fermentation of sugar, much like sake is the result of the fermentation of rice. And in 2015, we opened a plant that's got the capability of producing up to 40 million liters of bioethanol from sugar cane waste. So it's the pulp that's left after every bit of juice has been squeezed out of the cane. And in fact, is it not a great idea if we could produce biofuel from garbage? And that's actually something that's a lot closer than you may think. Because in India, we opened a demonstration plant that is taking organic waste, wood chips, municipal waste, agricultural waste, and is turning into high quality diesel, gasoline, and jet fuel. And the way it works is you dry and ground the organic matter, you add some catalyst particles, then you swirl it around with hot hydrogen gas, and this is by magic, hydrogen gas uh, forms, which is then upgraded into hydrocarbon liquids, which you can just drop into your fuel tank. Now, this is a very elegant and efficient solution to get biofuels. But the interesting thing is that this was not invented by Shell. It was invented by the Gas, Institute, the Gas Technology Institute from America, a non-for-profit organization. And it's an example of what I mentioned before, is that we work in collaboration with others to make sure that the best solutions get to the market soonest. Because this is one thing that's clear for any of this technology to have an impact on a global scale, it needs to be speedily developed and speedily de uh, deployed. And that's why Shell is working with entrepreneurs to make sure that the best ideas get accelerated, and we're working with governments and industry partners to make sure that the development gets accelerated and the deployment. So hopefully you agree that technology can make a real difference in reducing energy use and increasing energy efficiency. But another area where technology can play a role is in taking CO2 out of the atmosphere. Because for the foreseeable future, the manufacturer of certain vital materials like steel require very high temperatures that can only practically be provided at the moment by the burning of hydrocarbon fuels like gas and coal. So if you've got the ambition to get to net zero emissions, well, we've got to find a way to take CO2 out of the atmosphere. And that's possible because you can permanently absorb CO2 and plants to do that, or you can absorb it by minerals. And that's happening natural by certain farming techniques or simply by planting trees. But interestingly enough, engineers can achieve the same thing. If you, if you integrate a biomass fuel power plant and then you take the CO2 out of the exhaust gas and store it permanently on the ground, you reach the same objective. And that's the technology that Shell is very interested in. Now, I could continue talking about a lot of other technologies that are required. For instance, the generation of electricity from sun and wind, or the production of hydrogen from that electricity, or the fuel cells that can turn that hydrogen into very useful electricity back in your car or in your home. But I'd like to make a final point that applies to all of these technologies. Because if you're trying to do something as complicated 
to change the world energy system, which is very complex. There's no one size fits all for that. There's not a single solution. It needs an integration from a lot of solutions. It also recognizes that every country is different because we may have all the same atmosphere and sky above us, but what we put in them is quite dependent on where you are. Every country's got its own different resources, uh, different economic situation, different customer preferences. And actually Shell understands as both a producer and a consumer of energy that our role in this energy transition really depends on different markets. And that's why Shell built a microgrid, basically a small electricity grid, to experiment how we can connect different forms of energy to different types of consumers. How can we integrate a renewable intermittent resource like solar power in the existing energy system in a way that is efficient, reliable, and convenient to our customers? And here you see our solar array that we built in the US to test that. So the sky scenario shows that it's technically possible to achieve a net zero emission world. But it will require action. And it will require action from governments, markets, and society. And all these actions, they need to support each other. Now, one of these actions is the sharing of best ideas and solutions related to the technology that can really achieve this low energy, low, lower energy use world that is net, has net zero emissions. And in Shell, we try to play a role by advancing many of these technologies, whether it's digital that improves the energy efficiency, whether it's the use of biofuels, hopefully from organic waste, or whether it's building facilities that actually take more CO2 out of the atmosphere than we put in there. And we're already making a lot of investments in that area, and we plan to do more. And we invite you all to join us on that. And let me come back to the sky. So there's an English saying, which is called pie in the sky, which talks about a very nice idea, but unlikely to be realized. And when economists talk about growing the pie, they mean increasing wealth that's then shared amongst the members of society. Now, I believe that with technology and our sky scenario, we've got a recipe. We've got a recipe of growing the pie in a way that does not overheat the world. Make a pie so big that everyone in the world can have a slice of it even those billions that don't have access to any modern form of energy today. And ultimately, it is up to all of us to make this happen. Thank you.